I'm going to share with you my top five credit card picks for 2024. We'll start off with some more beginner friendly cards that have no annual fees and are easier to get with limited credit history. And then we'll slowly move our way up to more advanced territory. With that in mind, let's discuss the fifth card on this list, the Discover It. Now, this particular Discover card is one that I kind of wish I had started out with. If I could go back, I'd probably pick up the Discover It. With no annual fee and a generous cashback match in the first year, the Discover It is a great introduction to the world of credit card rewards. In fact, I might even say that this would be a great second or third card even. That Discover It sign-up bonus is kind of unique because Discover will actually go ahead and match every single dollar you earn in cash back in your first year of having the card. And the best part about this is that match is unlimited. Not bad for a first credit card. And even better, if you happen to have a friend who has the Discover card, oftentimes you'll be able to earn $100 sign-up bonus on top of your cash back match. The Discover It is a rotating quarterly category card, which means you'll get 5% cash back on different categories every single quarter. Right now, for the first three months of 2022, you can get 5% cash back on restaurant and drugstore purchases. And that 5% category is capped at $1,500 in combined spend. And then after that, you'll just get 1%. And outside of those categories, you do also, of course, get 1% back on everything else. Now, if we think about the cash back match, this could be really more like 10% rotating quarterly categories, or it could be a 2% catch all card in the first year. Obviously, the catch is you're not going to get that cash back match immediately. You're going to have to wait till your card member anniversary hits. Another great no annual fee card that I'm including as my number four credit card of 2024 is the Built MasterCard. I think the Built card offers a fantastic opportunity if you have at least a year of credit history and you're still just kind of starting out in your career and you probably don't own a home yet. If that's the case for you, then I absolutely recommend this card. You can pay your rent and earn points without incurring those expensive credit card processing fees that landlords typically charge if you try to pay your rent with a credit card. But with a bill card, you don't have to worry about that. With this card, I typically earn 2,400 points a month on average between my rent, utilities, and internet. And I can then transfer those points out to Built's transfer partners, such as American, Hyatt, or United. With this Built card, you can earn on top of your rent spend three times on dining, two times on travel, and one times on everything else. And the cool thing is, on rent day, which is the first of the month, you'll get double points on everything but rent. It's nice if you can plan a purchase or something, but even if you only put five purchases a month onto the card, you'll still come ahead with some pretty consistent points every single month. Unfortunately, there is no official sign-up bonus for the built card. It's not all bad, though. Every single month, you have a chance to earn up to 250 points just by playing their trivia game called Point Quest. You can also link your transfer partner accounts to built. So if you have like an American Airlines account, United, etc., you can link those and built will give you 100 points each. All in all, I would say that the built card is a great first travel card, especially because no annual fee, it offers some really high quality travel protections. Now, speaking of travel credit cards, another great beginner to intermediate option is the Chase Sapphire Preferred, clocking in at a $95 annual fee. With an annual fee, this card is, of course, a bit of a jump from the two previous picks on this list. The Chase Sapphire Preferred is a great way to start earning Chase Altmer rewards points. Now, some people might tell you that it's overrated, and they might be right to a degree. Personally, I don't use the card as much as I used to, but if you're just dipping into the travel rewards side of the credit card space, then you might want to consider the Sapphire Preferred. You'll earn five times ultimate rewards points when you book through the Chase Travel Portal. You can also use this card dining out for three times points, three times on online groceries, if that's your thing, two times on all travel not booked through Chase Travel, and then of course, one times on everything else. Right now, I use the Chase Sapphire Preferred as my dining card, but there are some better options that you'll see later on this list. When I got this card, I earned a 60,000 point sign up bonus, and I had to spend $4,000 in three months to do so. So just make sure you can reach that minimum spend with your current spending habits so you don't overspend or miss out on the sign-up bonus one way or another. 
You also might want to wait to get this card because sometimes Chase will run 80,000 all the way up to 100,000 points limited time offers for sign up bonuses on the Sapphire Preferred. Of course, if you're like me, then you might get a little impatient and just go for the 60k and that's honestly fine because the good news is you can get a bonus on this card every four years. You'll just have to downgrade it to a Chase Freedom card at that point and reapply. The Sapphire Preferred also sports a $50 hotel credit that you can get if you book a hotel stay through Chase Travel. A lot of people have found that this is hard to use, and I have not used it yet either. I, that is something I wish I've done, but you might as well take advantage of it if that's something that you can plan out ahead of time. The Chase Sapphire Preferred is a great travel card, much like the build card is, and it offers very similar protections. The only difference is the Sapphire Preferred can transfer ultimate rewards points to a lot of different user partners, and you can also combine your other Chase points that you earn on your Chase Freedom cards if you have those, and therefore you can probably earn more points this way. So you're paying $95 for the essentially the privilege of moving out your points, but if you have other Chase earning cards, it might be worthwhile. Whereas with built, you're getting built points from one card, and while it's consistent, it might take you a while to save up enough points for a nice redemption. Now, remember when I was talking about annual fees higher than $95? Well, let's turn our attention to the second best credit card of 2024, the Amex Gold. I do think that this is a really great credit card, of course, and the second best of this year, but I do want to caution people before they go and apply for this card. This is a card that you need to be getting good value from in the long term to keep open. The $250 annual fee can be partially offset with $240 worth of credits that you get every single year. You get $120 worth of Uber cash for Uber rides or Uber Eats, and that's distributed $10 monthly. You also get $10 for a dining credit, which you can use for things like Grubhub, or Cheesecake Factory, or Shake Shack. And I say like partially offset because you do need to account for upcharges for these services, things like that. However, if it does meet your natural spend, say you take Ubers or you order food once or twice a month, then this card makes sense based on those credits, leaving with you a quote, effective $10 annual fee. Though in reality, I like to think of it like paying for $240 worth of these services up front. The gold earns membership rewards points, and you can currently get a 60,000 point sign-up bonus after you spend $6,000 in the first six months. You can also find 75,000 all the way up to 90,000 offers as well, typically found through people's referral links, or if you search in an incognito browser, you might get lucky. Where the card really shines, though, is its earning potential. You can earn four times membership rewards points on grocery stores in the United States, as well as four times points on all dining in the United States. This includes restaurants, delivery services, and takeout. And then abroad, it is just restaurants. You also get three times points on all flights, either booked with an airline or in the Amex travel portal. And then you can get one times points on everything else. If you're an avid traveler, this card makes a ton of sense because you're going to be earning valuable membership rewards points. But if you're more of a cash back person, then this card doesn't make a ton of sense on its own. By itself, you would only be able to get 0.6 cents per point, which would eat into that four times points multiplier that is so coveted. You would need something like the Amex Charles Schwab Platinum to be able to cash out your points at above one cent per point at 1.1. There are other ways to do it, but that is probably the most popular option. Although if you're interested in the Amex Gold, chances are you probably don't already have a Schwab Platinum. If you do, that's awesome. But for the purposes of this video and the gold being one of my top picks, especially if you're trying to go up the proverbial credit card ladder, then you need to keep this in mind. The bottom line for the gold is if you are into travel and your food expenses are relatively high for groceries and dining, then I think this card is a great fit. But if you're somebody who doesn't want to have to keep track of admittedly very annoying statement credits, then you'll probably want to go with a different card. So I think that is a great segue into the best credit card of 2024, the US Bank Altitude Reserve. This is a credit card that I think can provide maximum value to minimum effort, if you will. It's really more of a 
high value, low maintenance credit card, in my opinion. It does have a $400 annual fee, but this is easily taken care of for at least part of it with a $325 travel or dining or both credit. The great thing about this is it is really low maintenance. You don't have to worry about monthly credits that you would with the Amex Gold, for example. US Bank will just give you a statement credit whenever you make a purchase within those categories up until you reach that $325 threshold. That's one of the biggest reasons that I am excited about this card. You also, of course, have access to a really great multiplier three times on mobile wallet purchases. This could be a three times catch all credit card as mobile wallets continue to be accepted more and more in the United States. You also get three times points on all travel, whether or not you're using a mobile wallet, five times points on prepaid hotel stays and rental cars in the Altitude Reward Center, and then obviously one times on everything else whenever you're not using a mobile wallet. Depending on the amount of spend that you run through the mobile wallet category, you can more than make up your annual fee and even come out ahead. Another way to help out with that $400 annual fee is the sign up bonus in year one. There's a 50,000 point sign up bonus after you spend $4,500 in the first 90 days from account opening. Now this might seem like 500 bucks just because US Bank doesn't have travel partners, but you can also redeem it for $750 worth of travel in the Altitude Reward Center because all travel redemptions with the reserve are worth 1.5 cents per point. It's a great way to get some pretty decent value if you don't want to have to go through the motions of going through award charts and award availability and potentially just coming up short. This is a nice way to kind of relax a little bit, not have to worry too much about your rewards while still getting a great amount of perks and benefits. I think that's a big reason that draws me to the card because as we all know, time is money. And if I don't have to worry about a credit or something like that, then that's automatically a little bit more appealing to me. I'm also really excited about the three times mobile wallet category. Of course, I use mobile wallets all the time nowadays, and I think it could really round out my setup or even simplify it by a lot. And if you don't have another card that gives you premium travel card benefits, then the Altitude Reserve is a good start. You get eight passes to Priority Pass lounges every single year. You also get a TSA PreCheck or Global Entry Credit of $100 to cover your application fee every four years, just like a bunch of other travel cards give you. On that same topic, you do also get pretty good travel protections that you'd come to expect on a premium travel credit card. I'm really excited about the Altitude Reserve it is the next card that I want to get, and I hope that I can get my hands on it soon. So stay tuned for a video of approval or a denial, as US Bank is pretty hard to get a card with. So all in all, the US Bank Altitude Reserve is the number one credit card in the game this year because of its high value to low maintenance ratio. I want to thank you all for watching today's video of my picks of the top five credit cards that you can get this year. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on my picks and your own picks, so please leave a comment below or reach out to me on Discord. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. I appreciate each and every one of you as we continue to build out a community together on this channel. I've been Josh, take care, and I'll see you next time.